consider uh, the balance equation below for a hypothetical reaction that takes place in a sold two decimeter cube container at uh, 300 K uh, 300 Kelvins that is so our hypothetical reaction is depending between uh, two atoms of P and two atoms of uh, some element uh, Q uh, which is giving us uh, two atoms of P Q right I'm calling P and uh, not for for us and just P because it's a hypothetical reaction and then uh, 6.1 says uh, define the term uh, chemical equilibrium uh, chemical equilibrium is a stage in a chemical reaction when the rate of forward reaction equals to the rate of the reverse reaction right and then 6.2 uh, 6.2 says the amount of each substance present uh, present in the equilibrium mixture at 300 k is shown below in the table and uh, there we have the table there and then it goes on to say the temperature of the container is now increased to 350 kelvins uh, when a new equilibrium is established, it is found that 1.2 moles of P is present in the container. And then uh, 6.2.1 says, uh, is the heat of the reaction positive or negative? So at our initial equilibrium, uh, the amount of uh, the reactants, uh, QP and uh, Q2 it's 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 moles right and then at 350k uh, when the temperature is now increased right uh, we have more products we have more P from 0 0.8 uh, to 1.2 uh, that tells us that uh, the reverse reaction was favored by the change so that's why now we have more reactants so if you increase the temperature uh, the reaction that will be favored is endothermic and that's the reverse reaction so the enthalpy or the heat of the reaction of uh, the forward reaction is negative so our answer for um, 6.2.1 uh, will be negative because uh, the reverse reaction was favored uh, by an increase of temperature if uh, the forward reaction was favored then we we're gonna say uh, the heat of our reaction is positive so 6.2.2 says uh, use uh, like Chatelier's principle uh, to explain the answer to 6.2.1 I guess that's what I just did I just you know explain 6.2.2 as I was trying to justify uh 6.2.1 so 6.2.3 uh, then says uh, calculate the equilibrium constant at 350 kelvins we know that uh, when we talk about the equilibrium constant uh, we use the concentration so the first thing is for us to determine uh, our volume right uh, that will help us when we calculate the concentration the volume is given in the equation as uh, two decimeter cube, right? So that's something to note because we're gonna use that uh, all the way going down. So now that we want to calculate uh, the Kc, the equilibrium constant of uh, the reaction, uh, we have to form some sort of a table uh, so that we can end up uh, calculating uh, the quantity at equilibrium. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to say uh, two atoms of P plus two atoms of Q, uh, they're giving us uh, two PQ. And then um, let me take out my roller and just create that table. Yeah, so there we go. And then uh, we have our initial initial uh, number of moles right 
uh, it is given on our table at 300k for p uh, the initial is 0 0.8 and then for q it's also 0 0.8 and then for pq is uh, 3.2 and then we are told that at the new equilibrium uh, for p uh, we have 1.2 so here we'll have our change and here we'll have our equilibrium concentration so we are told that here to at equilibrium for 2p it's a 1.2 so what's our change if we find the change for p then we can use the balancing coefficients to find the change for everything else and then from there we can find the concentration uh, we get our formula for kc we sub it in and then we're basically done with the equation so the change for uh, for p to determine it will subtract uh, the moles at equilibrium uh, by the initial moles that will be 1.2 minus 0 0.8 uh, which will give us uh, 0 0.4 right so if you wanna uh, find the change you subtract final from initial only makes sense you do the same in physics if you wanna change if you wanna find the change you subtract the final by the initial so now that we know the change for p we can use the balancing coefficients to find the change for q and the change for pq so we can see that uh, for p and q uh, for every is, is a 2 is to 1 relationship. So let me just write that. So we have the number of moles of uh, PQ, right? If we divide them by the number of moles of Q2, uh, the balancing coefficients will be uh, 2 divided by 1. So if you want to uh, find uh, the change for Q, you divide the change for P by 2. So 0 0.4 divided by 0. Point, uh, divided by 2, that will give us uh, 0 0.2 and then for p and pq the balancing coefficients are the same so uh, in our equation here that we establishing we're just gonna this was supposed to be p and not uh, pq so here for pq uh, we're just gonna have uh, 2 divided by 2 which is just 1 which is just 1 so the change for p and the change for pq is the same is also 0 0.4 so for q2 at equilibrium we'll get a 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 which will give us um which is going to give us one right and then uh, for pq we're going to have a 3.2 minus 0 0.4 which will give us 0. Point, which will give us 2.8 so why are we saying for q why are we saying that for q is a plus and then for pq it's a minus okay uh, this is what's happening we have a reaction if the products are increasing the reactants are decreasing so it is clear that the reactants are increasing right uh, the reverse reaction is being favored so for all the reactants the change will edit to find uh, the moles at equilibrium but then from the products because uh, the reaction is the reverse reaction is the one that's being favored meaning that the the products is getting depleted and is forming the reactants we're going to have a minus instead so that's why we're not saying uh, plus 0 0.4 but we say in a uh, minus 0 comma uh, 4 which is thus giving us a uh, 2.8 so when we get to this step to this step all we are left to do with is to find the concentration and then we can submit it in our equation so we have already established that uh, our volume is two decimeter cube so for 2p we're gonna say 1.2 divided by 2 that will give us 0 0.6 and then for q2 to be 1 divided by 2 which will give us 0 0.5 and then for 2pq that will be 2.8 divided by 2 which will give us 1.4 so at this step uh, we can then say kc uh, equals to uh, the products 
the concentration of the product uh, divided by the concentration of uh, the reactants, right? And then this will be equals to uh, the concentration of PQ uh, squared. Where is the squared coming from? The squared is the balancing coefficient. When you put the concentration, you have to square it by the balancing coefficient. So uh, for Q, uh, which is in the uh, denominator because it's the reactants, uh, you can see that the balancing coefficient uh, is 1. So we're just going to say uh, to the power 1, or you don't have to write that because it's always assumed true. And then for P, we're going to have P to the power of 2 because the balancing coefficient is 2. So what's the concentration of uh, PQ? That's 1.4. So we have 1.4 uh, squared divided concentration for uh, Q2 is 0 0.6. Uh, squared and then the concentration for p is 0 0.5 and then after that it's just a matter of putting it in the calculator uh, which i'm gonna do yeah real quick so we have uh, 1.4 squared divided by 0 0.6 squared multiplied by 0 0.5 which is equals to 10.8 89 and then we don't have any units for kc uh, another thing uh, to be aware of is that when we are uh, writing this formula for kc uh, we only uh, regard uh, reactants or products that are in gaseous or aqueous form we don't uh, consider solids okay uh, so that is that for that question uh, let's move ahead 6.2.4 says how will the equilibrium constant in question 6.2.3 be affected when the volume of the container uh, is decreased at constant at constant what and constant uh, temperature uh, choose uh, either increase or decrease uh or remain the same give a reason for your answer um it will remain the same uh let me just write that down so it's gonna remain uh the same uh it will remain the same because only temperature can change kc that's always true only temperature can change kc because um if we increase or decrease the volume, then we have done that for both the reactants and both the products. So if it slows down the forward reaction, it's also going to slow down uh, the reverse reaction equally. So KC at the end of the day is going to remain uh, intact. The only thing that affects KC is the temperature. 6.3 uh, 6 says uh, more Q2. Uh, Q2 is a reactant. So uh, react the, the reactant Q2 is now added to the reaction mixture at a constant temperature. How will each of the following be affected? Choose uh, from increase, decrease, or remain the same. Uh, PQ. Uh, PQ is a product, so uh, it's going to increase, right? Because if we increase the reactants, uh, then the forward reaction will be uh, favored uh, so that we can establish our state of equilibrium. So the yield of uh, PQ uh, will increase. So basically what I'm saying is that uh, if you increase the, uh, the reactants, uh, then uh, the yield of the products will increase. Uh, if you increase the product, then the yield of the reactant of the of the reactants will increase so the reverse reaction will be forward it uh, will be favored and then 6.3.2 says uh, the number of moles of p p okay p uh 2p and q2 and then they say i uh, will increase q2 right so what will happen to p uh, the number of moles of p will go down because the forward reaction will be favored if you increase the reactance, right? So uh, 2p will be getting depleted at a higher rate. So for 6.2, for 6.3.2, uh, that will be decreases.